rumors have been swirling again, and the rumor mill this time is taking aims at Marvel, which is not very uncommon, and it's taking aim at Fox, which, again, not uncommon, especially since these two have two of the biggest superhero franchises out there. Well, the two biggest superhero franchises out there, because Sony got rid of theirs pretty much because they did it horrible, which was the Spider-Man series. And apparently there have been early talks, and when I say early talks, it's very ambiguous. People don't know if this is early talks as in they've really had sit-down discussions or maybe two executives just threw the idea at each other. But nonetheless, there have been early talks between Marvel and Fox about, well, really we should call it Disney and Fox, but Marvel and Fox about including some of their characters in the Marvel Cinematic Universe hmm. and all the things that this can mean. Now, if you had told me this four years ago, I would have said impossible. If you told me this three years ago, I would have said definitely impossible. If you told me this two years ago, I said they hate each other, they're never going to do it. But after what we saw happening with Spider-Man and Sony and Marvel coming together, it doesn't seem all that far-fetched. Uh, now, if you're not familiar with what I'm talking about, Sony did this deal with Marvel where they say, okay, you can kind of use our char the characters you have given us the license to, a la Spider-Man, include them in some of your movies, have creative control over their own movies, but we're going to get our cut. Mm -hmm. it doesn't sound that bad of a deal. If you have, I was Sony and all my movies were flopping, and granted, I say flop, but still make like two, three hundred million dollars, but flopping in superhero sense, I would be like, were, were oh, they you're going to give me the same amount of money? Dollars, though? Like, I'm pretty sure Fantastic Four just bombed. Oh, Fantastic Four, but I think that was a Fox one, too. I'm pretty sure. You're right. Fox. You're right. It was a Fantastic Four. So, Sony, yeah, yeah. I mean, Spider Man no, didn't do that bad. Too. Fox is. Yeah. Sony is, uh, is oh, Spider Man yeah. the only one that Sony had? Yeah, I believe so. Well, they might go. have had another little one, but they—they they, it was Fox, Taz, the Mutants, and Fantastic Four. Sony has the Spider-Man world, and Marvel kind of has all the rest. It, wait, somebody has Namor in there. I can't remember. We did a story. Um, I, 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 I was looking it up today. I saw Namor come up. I think Universal used to, but okay. it looked like I'm Marvel like, got, a, got Namor got back. It. Yeah, we did a story about it a couple weeks ago. It's in one of our videos somewhere, so hey, there you go. <laughs> but um, so this is what we've heard and again it it's not so far-fetched right now because we've already seen a, a similar deal being struck between sony and marvel so this just gets the wheels turning in my brain of imagining what could happen what we could get out of this so this is where we're going to kind of spitball a couple things now it's not clear whether they would just do movies like uh like just give them the characters for their movies like sony did with spider-man I've also heard, heard the idea of a shared universe between the two groups being thrown out there. So mm. maybe Fox would do some of the movies and include some of the Marvel characters, and some maybe Marvel would do some of the movies and include some of the Fox characters. That could it's also mean that they won't completely reboot the series the way that they're kind really of with Spider-Man. They might decide to figure out well, a way to write in. Spider-Man's not going to reboot either. They're just kind of like, okay, you already know the basic premise yeah, of Spider-Man. They're, We're just gonna give they're not story. doing an origin story, but they're also not utilizing what was previously day, laid yeah, down in exactly. the previous movie. So that, that's very possible, yeah. yeah. So, but but it, so it, I think that if they did a combined universe, they might use what was already laid down in the, the Fox series. And they, they could, because the way X-Men kind of restarted itself with the first class trilogy, and the way it ended uh, was, you know, X-Men Apocalypse was supposed to be the end of that trilogy. Hopefully we'll get more X-Men movies of that ilk, because I love the Brian Singer X-Men movies. I think Brian Singer but, said that it, that he didn't want to remain a trilogy from that. It was supposed to continue on, so... Okay, so... There you go. So, and, and where are they now? Things. They're in the 80s now. A lot of these Marvel movies don't take place until the 2000s, so you could have a pretty easy transition. If you already rebooted your universe, kind of put it to a blank slate say, okay, left off in the 80s, and then we're going to pick back up in the 2000s after all this other crazy stuff has happened. I could really, I could see that going pretty well. If you wanted to share the universes without canceling out everything that happened on each side, you would have to do something with Quicksilver. He's yeah. dead in one universe and alive in the other. So I mean, you can, they could write that, that out because there was a bunch of, there was that time in between, like you said. Mm -hmm. um, but also they could, um, the, I think the bigger thing that they would have to deal with is, in the X-Men universe, mutants are known by everyone in a big topic politically, and they never mention it. It never comes up at all in but the again, Marvel universe. But here's the thing, though. Yeah, they are known in the Marvel in the uh, the, the X-Men universe. But if you look at the other two, I mean, the, the first class trilogy, it is kept more under wraps than in the newer X-Men. I mean, the older X-Men movies like X-Men 1, X-Men 2, and X-Men 3. 
Uh, mutants were kind of on the scene already. The general public was very aware of them. Yeah, they had like Trask coming out in Days of Future Past, and there were people had knowledge of mutants. But if you remember, there was one part where like they were really unveiled to the world and, and Days of Future Past where Mystique jumps out the window and everybody mm-hmm. kind of figures it out. So you could almost do something, a quick little write around and probably keep them more under wraps uh, still. And say people and just forgot the about them during well, a couple just decades. Say, oh, it was a prank. It was a prank. You know, they, they mm-hmm. didn't realize it. I, I guess having there was Magneto no registration destroy RFK like but, would but. be kind of hard to go back around because how dare you destroy RFK, Magneto? How dare you? That was the one thing I had a real big problem with in Days of Future Past. But here, neither here nor there. Neither here nor there. <laughs> so, and, and then also... One other thing before we get into the stories we'd like to see is a place where they would fit in. Uh, a lot of people have said that Phase 4 would probably be the earliest we would see any of these uh, crossover movies for the Marvel Universe because there's a lot of untitled movies. I don't know why they would even do that. They're like, okay, we're going to release a movie in 2018, 2019, 2020, 20... but they're all untitled. We're not going to tell you what they are. Like, don't even tell us if the movie's coming out then. Like, we assume they're coming out then. But that being said, spider-man deal didn't go like through until like uh i want to say there was like they were still filming towards the end of filming and they had to do some reshoots to get spider-man into uh captain america civil war and it worked out magnificently so i do have faith that this group could put any of these people in real quick if they needed to and it really probably wouldn't hurt the product yeah the couple things that i would say before going too far with it though is there were talks, rumors months ago, like oh, sometime last year, that there were some talks between Fox and Marvel that they well, later more came out. TV realm. Yeah, but they came out. They both sides came out and said no, this this was nothing. But they could have still been in talks, and they're just saying that For nothing sure. happened. Sure. But and the other thing, some talks, then yeah. maybe this. Is the other big thing, too. I'm wondering whether this is. Because we know so little whether this is going to include the X-Men or whether this is going to include Fantastic Four. I would imagine it could include both. You, now, they you, and I know that's X-Men what they would Fantastic want. Four separate. Yeah, I know that's what Marvel would want. But, you know, uh, Fantastic Four, I think, might be the better candidate for this kind of arrangement just because... Um, yeah, because Fantastic Four hasn't done as well. And that's the Randall, situation with Sony movie. and Marvel is Spider-Man hadn't been doing well. Fantastic Four has pretty much never done well. Um, so that would be the one that I think Fox would be more interested in, in putting a share of to, as opposed to X-Men, which has continued to put, a, put out money for them even when they have a few bad movies in the series. They're doing fine making money off yeah. of that one. And you have a bigger universe with X-Men that you could still keep to yourself with still including Fantastic Four in the other side. So I, I see your point, and that, that's pretty valid. Um, so, But let's talk about what characters would you like to see crossed over. Now, everybody, they always call Fantastic Four the first family of Marvel. I personally kind of find them dull. And but, a lot, you know, I hear a lot of the, lot com- of the comic books people. are better. I hear the Fantastic Four saved um, Marvel from going under. Well, back. That's what kept them going well, in the sixties. Yeah, um, it might be just that the portrayal in a lot of the media that that we care about has been poor because we know that the movies have been bad. Um, TV shows were were all right, um, but that could be it. And I've heard that that's kind of been a stickler for for marvel that they've also been trying to tell the writers to stop making new characters because they don't want to feed the other franchise they're trying to starve and they've they've done that with with x-men as of recently like if you look at the the publications they've really taken x-men and the mutant side of things and kind of driven them downward whereas they're lifting up other parts of it like the avengers of like the the avenger comics now are like incredible which is unfortunate because x-men are cool i like the x-men it, but so okay so what story slash characters would you think you'd like to see crossover now i personally personally i'd love to see beast and wolverine join the avengers now if you don't know about beast he was an avenger in the 70s and the 80s and the early 90s i believe he was almost a bigger character as an avenger than he was as an x-men in the beginning and then the cartoon came out and then they moved him back over so i'd like to see him with the avengers i don't care what story you do but i'd like to see beast and wolverine join the avengers and Wolverine is self-explanatory because he's badass. So, yeah. 
Yes, yes. Cool. Uh, he's the most popular X-Men character anyway, and he does do a lot of stuff on his own mm-hmm. with other superheroes in the Marvel Universe. So he makes a lot of sense, no matter what, yeah. um, to integrate with, with pretty much anyone, yeah. really. And the, the only other thing I would really, really like to see, now this is not canon, and they would have to tell everybody, look, guys, this is like just a fantasy one-off type movie, but is uh, Deadpool kills the Marvel Universe? Where he just murders everybody. That's true. We that we do really have cool. to consider Deadpool is is part of that, and mm-hmm. it would be a fun one. Um, I would say, I would like to see, really, all. I would what I would really like to see is instead instead of Civil War, like I've said before, is Secret Wars. In which case, mm-hmm. Fantastic that, Four is a big player yeah. in in yeah, in uh, the original Secret Wars. Anyway, I'm not as up to date on the, the newer Secret Wars. Um, and X-Men are big players, and the most interesting dynamics in Secret Wars to me were, in fact, with both Fantastic Four in the the relationship between uh, Reed Richards and Doctor Doom, Mm -hmm. um, and how Doctor Doom sees things on the villain side and how he respects Richards, and with the X-Men and Magneto, who Magneto, as I've said before, is originally put on the good side, in Secret mm-hmm. Wars, which makes it so interesting, but the other heroes reject him, and all it it yeah. happens early on, but it's Read an interesting Secret dynamic. Wars, it's a really cool story. Yeah, yeah. Um, but that's why I would say, like, getting both of those sets would set up a great opportunity to to utilize those dynamics in a Secret Wars that would otherwise be cool to still do this huge battle of good versus evil, but has a lot more of the background uh, dynamic impact from having those sets of characters yeah. that Marvel well, doesn't and, have at all. Marvel has all the other what, ones, which are all good, good are. too, but not as good, I think, as as would be shown with that, that set of characters. And that would also be able to show off how cool Fantastic Four can be by that's showing true. them in that kind of setting. And, and, and that's another good point, too. Bringing out, like, a Secret Wars or whatever the invasion was, the scroll invasion yeah. or something like that. I mean, they're already but making these a, bigger and bigger movies see. like Civil War and Avengers. Oh, yeah. But people want to see superheroes fight. I mean, that's what we want to see. That's why Civil War was so great. It gave us everything we wanted. We got to see some of our fair, favorite characters go toe to toe. And I think it would just work spectacularly. So, I mean, there's plenty. We just barely, I mean, just even barely scratched the surface. I didn't even talk about Avengers versus X-Men would be amazing. We didn't talk about the Fantastic Four. Heck, heck I mean, I want to say Thing joins the Guardians of the Galaxy at some point for a while. You know, I, there's just so many really cool things. You could have She-Hulk join uh, the, the the Fantastic Four. She does that for a while. That would be some pretty cool things if you want to introduce those. You can so do more with Hulk in general because a lot of there there are things with Hulk that can, only happen with the X-Men, so... Mm-hmm. Like him on so, getting his powers further unlocked um, by Jean Grey and things like that. So, so there's there's tons of really th- cool things, and we only scratched the surface. We're not going to go on forever. We literally could sit here and talk for an hour, probably longer th- than that, about what characters we would want to see crossover. But hit us up. Let us know what you want to see. If this were to somehow the miracle, this would come to fruition. What characters would you like to see crossover, or what storylines would you like to see mashed up? Hit us up. Let us know. Comments down below. Of course, at Words to My Face on Twitter. Google Plus and Facebook. Always good ways of getting a hold of us. But let's keep.